Today I'm gonna to be teaching you guys how you can use this sick infinite zoom effect using AI. Let's go. What's up guys, my name is Devin Wynn, welcome to 11% Tutorials. As I mentioned, today I'm going to be teaching you guys how you can create this sick infinite zoom effect using AI. It's a really dope effect that's been used in music videos, game edits, and just a bunch of other highlight reels, and it's really super easy to use, especially now with the power of AI. Recently, AI has really managed to flip the script in the visual effects world, so it's really mandatory that you guys seriously start taking your effects to the next level using AI. Seriously guys, it helps save time and it just really creates better effects overall. But before we hop into today's tutorial, if you guys are interested in spicing up and speaking speeding up your editing workflow, definitely make sure to check out 11percent.net. There we seriously drop insane preset packs that are super easy to use, let you just drag and drop. We recently just dropped our new paint stop motion preset pack, it's super easy to use and it really just helps add a lot of heat to your video effects edits. I seriously pour my heart and soul into creating these preset packs and seriously that's how you guys support me and keep me going so I can keep making free tutorials like this on YouTube for you guys. So really if you could check out 11percent.net, two minutes of your day, it'd mean the world to me. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into the tutorial. All right guys, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're actually gonna load up Photoshop beta. I know there's some of you guys who don't have the Adobe suite, but don't worry, we're gonna be going over two ways to do this effect. One with the Adobe suite with the Photoshop beta generative fill, and then one without Adobe suite, and we're gonna be using an external free AI generative image fill website, which you're gonna get to in just a minute. So first off, I'm gonna show you guys how to do this effect with Photoshop beta. Photoshop beta has been absolutely insane recently with its new generative fill AI. So we're just gonna go ahead and create a new project file right here. Make sure it is in the same composition of your footage. So I have 1920 by 1080 and you can just name this Gen Fill. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and drag our screenshot into our Photoshop project. So right here, I have a nice screenshot right here of Ken Carson and I'm just gonna drag this into the middle. Now, as you can see, I'm kind of scaling it down a little bit. So what I'm doing is I'm just gonna scale this down right here to about like a 50% of the actual image size right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn off this background image. Now, one thing you wanna know is take a screenshot of the first frame of your video clip. So this is the first frame of this video clip that I'm gonna be editing and working with in Premiere Pro. So make sure it's the first frame, just really important note. Now, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna select our selector tool. And I'm just simply going to drag and expand and select the area above my subject right here. And now you're gonna hit the magic generative fill button. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in Okay, and then I'm just gonna do something maybe like add clouds. Now, the more specific that you are for AI, the better because it just creates better effects. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit generate. And it's gonna go ahead and take its time to generate some images. Now, remember one very important thing is make sure that you have your background layer off right here on off and off visibility because we need to have a transparent image for this effect to work. So now you're gonna see it generated a couple images and some of the first images might not work, but that's okay. You can see we have some really harsh edges. I don't know, Photoshop was kind of just tripping on this one. But guess what? We can just go ahead and run these again. Basically select the best image right here and then you can just go ahead and tweak your prompt. So I'm gonna say maybe the clouds is kind of throwing it off. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete the clouds part and then I'm just gonna hit generate again. And basically Photoshop is just going to generate another set of images. And now you can basically hit this generate image as many times as you would like. That's just the perks of having the Adobe Suite and its new AI generator fill. So this image right here is pretty cool and I, I like this one. So then what I'm basically gonna do is I'm just gonna basically select the other areas of the subject and basically type in the same prompt and fill in the rest of our image. So I'm just gonna go ahead and speed the segment up. And after you've done that a couple times, now you can see we have a nice little image selection right here. I filled in all the areas around my subject and we have a nice scene. So I'm gonna export this image and drag it back into my project. And then what I'm just gonna do is I'm just going to simply go ahead and fill in all the rest of these other areas with more AI generative fill. And then you guessed it, we're just gonna simply go ahead and import that image in one more time and then we're we're gonna do is we're just going to simply generate some more AI fill images. I've already done this beforehand just so I save some time in this tutorial, but you can see we can create some really dope pictures by just simply scaling this image down even further and further. And you can really go like beyond limits. The reason why I'm doing multiple images and not just one giant large file is because the max limit of Photoshop files are 10,000 pixels and 10,000 pixel file is really a crazy large file size. And especially once you drag this into Premiere Pro to start editing it, it's really gonna start to slow things down. So I really personally found it 
bit better to just export a bunch of larger or smaller 1080 by 1920 files or even 4k files even work but just having a bunch of smaller files are just make it a lot easier to edit and just create some dope effects now that's the way to do it on adobe photoshop but let's go ahead and jump into runwayml.com this is a free website no sponsorship but if you'd like to sponsor us runway feel free to reach out to us totally open to it you can come over here to this website app.runwayml.com link below in the description it's a really great ai website it's super easy and super fun to use and it's also free it's the best part about it so what you're going to do is you're going to come over here to the tab right here where it says generate images i'm going to hit the option right here where it's called infinite image they have an infinite image option how cool is that and what i'm basically going to do is i'm just going to go ahead and drag in my screenshot right here and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to use this cube this nice little frame right here and i can just basically just like in adobe photoshop expand this image however i want so i can say I'm gonna drag this frame over here and hit generate. Now you can see that we've added in our frame and after we typed in our prompt and generated some images, Runway ML is gonna do a great job at generating some AI image extensions. And you can see it's already doing a pretty good job. We have some nice forced options right here above Ken. And basically you can just accept whichever one you like the most. So I'm gonna like this one, this one's pretty cool. And then once you're done with that, you can just basically continue to move this frame around to other parts of the images and just continue typing the prompt and expanding the image away. And once you've done that two or three times, now it's time to go ahead and hop into Premiere Pro and add some animation. So now that we are inside of our Premiere Pro project, you can see that we have our nice three images loaded up right here. And you can see as we zoom in, it just creates this nice zoom in effect. But now it's time to go ahead and add some actual animation to this. So before we do anything, the first thing that I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna come over here to this little new item icon and I'm going to create a new adjustment layer and just keep it the same width of your dimensions of your project. And I'm going to drag this over our projects. I'm just going to label this as blue so I can just keep track of it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to my effects and I'm going to search for the transform effect. And I'm just going to drag this onto my adjustment layer. And we're just gonna go ahead and save that over here for later. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start off with my largest frame, my largest zoom out frame. And I'm basically going to go ahead and turn down and drag the second frame over it. So the second largest frame. And I'm just going to turn down the opacity of the second largest frame and just scale it down until it matches our shot a little bit like that. All right, there you go. So now it looks like it's matching a little bit. Looks pretty cool. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a nice ellipse mask right here over our image. And I'm just gonna drag this over and I'm going to increase the feather just so that we have a nice you know, blending of the image because sometimes even though AI generates it to match the images, we still want to blend the images as much as we possibly can. And now what we're going to do is we are going to simply zoom in. So I'm gonna hit a scale keyframe right here at the very beginning of this clip. And then I'm gonna go all the way to about, let's go about three to four seconds in. And I'm gonna scale this up until this frame is pretty large right here. So right around here is pretty good. Oh, also make sure to hit a scale keyframe at the very beginning of the bottom clip as well. And then I'm going to scale in the bottom clip until it matches that same frame right there. Boom, there we go. And so now we're about three, four, four clips in and you can see we have this nice zoom in effect that's going on as it zooms into our subject right here. And it's looking pretty dope already if you ask me. And then lastly, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to match up that last frame right here so that we can zoom in just even a little bit more. So I'm going to turn this opacity down to about 50%. And right here where the actual keyframe ends on the, on the second clip layer, I'm going to start this new, or our first layer of our zoom. And I'm just going to scale this up to match it exactly at that exact frame right there. And I'm going to hit a keyframe at the scale at the very beginning. And you guessed it as we go a couple frames in, let's go or a couple seconds in, I'm just going to scale this up until we are at full frame of our subject right there. So it hopefully matches and boom, there we go. Now we have a nice little uh, animation. You can of course just go ahead and mess around with the keyframes until you get a good animation and boom, there we go. Now we have a nice zoom in. Of course, remember to go back in and increase all the opacities back up to 100%. And boom, there we go. Now you can see if we play this out, we have this nice zoom in animation effect. Now, the only problem here is that we kind of have this nice slowdown. So it starts off really fast and it's looking really cool, but it starts to slow down as we zoom in. And that is just basically because of the proportioning and the scale.
scale of the actual image. And it's basically just kind of harder for Premiere Pro to like match the, the speed of the zoom because this image is so large and we're zooming in so fast. And then um, we're just zooming in the same amount on a much smaller image. So basically this is where our adjustment layer comes into hand. We're gonna drag this adjustment layer over our entire frame right here. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hit a scale keyframe right around at the beginning, a couple frames in maybe, and then right around where the actual zoom in starts to slow down, I'm going to basically zoom in even more with our adjustment layer so that we have a much faster zoom. So the zooms continues at the same rate. So you can see that now that once we play it out, the zoom is continuing at a much faster rate or it just basically maintains the zoom. And to match this up even better, what you can do is you can hit a drop down on the scale right here. And I'm just going to drag these anchor points in so that we create a nice little Bezier curve so that the zoom just maintains the same amount of speed throughout the entire clip. And voila, there you go, there we have it. We have a nice zoom in effect. So now that I have my original video clips into this timeline, you can see this is the, the original video. Now you can see once we play this out, it basically match cuts with the exact original frame. And we kind of have a cool effect, but still it's kind of a little bit static and just not cool looking. So to spice this up, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and drag in another adjustment layer. So I'm creating a new adjustment layer and dragging this in and trimming it down to about like four to five frames and dragging this over our subject. And I'm actually gonna be using our Shake It Up preset pack that we just dropped a couple months ago. This preset pack is absolutely insane. It really helps save me a lot of time, especially when editing and when I need to add really quick effects to my videos. So right here, you can see, I'm gonna drag in this Shake Zoom Flash to our adjustment layer and boom, there you go. We have this nice, zoom in shake effect. And now I can even start this a couple frames sooner, maybe right around here. And let's see if that works too. And boom, there you go. Now we even have a sicker, faster zoom in effect. And it also helps get the job done as well. The Shake It Up pack has 10 presets that you can easily just drag and drop to adjustment layers, just like we did right here. And it really helps save you a bunch of time and also just adds a bunch of cool, sick shake motions to your projects. And it's overall, it's just really one of the best investments any video editor can make. If you're interested in copying this pack, check out 11percent.net, link in the description. And now what I'm gonna do finally is I'm gonna go ahead and drag in the handheld shake low version two to our entire nested clip to just add some cooler animation to this and voila there you go you can see we have a nice sick zoom in animation effect and there you guys have it a sick ai animation zoom in effect that you can use and create all within premiere pro and photoshop or runwayml.com. Lastly, what I did to spice this up even more is you can just go ahead and add in some overlays to just make it look a little bit more motion-like. So I found this little green screen clip of some bats right here, downloaded off of YouTube. I'm gonna link to this one below in the description if you wanna use this one, or you can use any other green screen animations you find on YouTube. I use the ultra key to just basically key out the green. And if you go ahead and add some nice little animation to it, you can have some nice bats that fly over your screen and just add some more motion and movement to your foot and just creates a cooler overall look. And with that guys, here is the final result. If you guys made it to the end of the video, I just wanna say thank you again so much for watching. Really, if you found any value or help from this video, please be sure to smash the like button and hit subscribe. It's free, all this content is free, so really, it means the world to me. And once again, if you're interested in spicing up your edits, definitely make sure to check out 11percent.net. We're seriously dropping insane heat there. We just dropped our new paint preset pack. We have preset packs from title cards, all the way to Chrome VFX overlays, absolutely insane stuff. So yeah, definitely make sure to check out our website. And also, if you'd like to receive exclusive discounts at 11percent.net for exclusive pre presets and just discounts on the overall entire store. You can sign up at our Patreon at the link below in the description. Really, all you guys' support really just allows me to keep going and keep making content for you guys for free. So it seriously means a lot to me. If you had any questions or concerns throughout the entire tutorial, definitely make sure to leave a comment down below. I love to hear what you guys have to say. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.